so tired and thirsty and feel like I just can't go on. My spirit's yearning to find a way off this road that I've been traveling on, and it feels like I've walked a thousand miles, getting nowhere, getting nowhere. So what else can I do but call your name? Then I hear. Breakthrough, 
as we come together to worship God around this YouTube video service. And I pray as we do so that each one of us will know God calling us to him. For God is love. He loves each one of us. He loves each one of us unconditionally and calls us to him through his son, Jesus Christ. And I pray that as we we come to this service together, this time of worship together, we will hear the Lord Jesus Christ calling us, welcoming us and loving us by the grace of God. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that you are love. Your whole being is love. And thank you that in that love, you call out to us. You call us back to yourself. When we have walked away. And so, Father, we, we pray to you that uh, as we come to you this evening, that uh, we will come with that sense of wanting to repent, that sense of wanting to turn away from the things that are wrong, from that sense of wanting to turn away from the things that are not of you and turn to you and to the things of you. Thank you, Father, that you forgive us through Jesus Christ. As we come to you in faith in Jesus Christ, you forgive us. You wash our sins away and we are made clean. So, Father, we pray that we will know that afresh this during this worship time. And that we would hear your calling towards you and then your sending us out in the name of Jesus to bring that good news that we have heard to others around us. So we pray, Lord, that you will equip us during this time. Equip us to serve you and one another. In Jesus' name. Amen. And as we do each week, let's turn to a word of scripture as we reflect in this time of worship together. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline, so be earnest and repent. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person, and they with me. Let's worship him as our musicians lead us. <laughs>
Thank you, Father, for that opportunity to worship you uh, in music and song. Thank you, Father, for the ability to, to praise your name in that music, those wonderful gifts, and for those musicians who have led us in our time together. And now, Father, we pray that you would continue to open our ears, that we might hear you as Joe comes to speak with us. Amen. There's a bit of a change in the air just recently, isn't there? Perhaps because of the possible easing of lockdown on the horizon. Maybe because it's the beginning of spring. All those pretty pastel colours of spring flowers popping up and the shafts of mood-lifting sunlight beginning to break through now and then. And even though I'm still aware of so much sadness about, these things offer just a glimmer of hope, like a, a dark, heavy door beginning to creak open, giving, dare I say, a, a glimpse of a way forward. Maybe like me, you're starting to wonder, where is life going from here? What direction are you heading in? Where do you see yourself in a few years? What's your destination? And do you have the keys to get there? Just recently, I've had a spate of annoying issues with keys and doors. Over the space of just a few weeks, one problem after another with keys and doors. First, I needed to go shopping. I went out to my car. I pressed the electronic key and nothing. Dead as a dodo. Where the car had been sitting on the drive for so long, it was drained of power. 
did need to be jump started. Fortunately, I had a second vehicle I could use. So I went and got the other keys. I went and did my shopping. I was just loading the car with the big door of the boot wide open. And suddenly a gust of wind blew. And before I could stop it, the door slammed shut. And then I heard the dreaded click of the central locking, which somehow went off of its own accord. And then I realised that I stood there in the car park, miles from home. My purse, my bag, my phone, my keys were all locked on the inside. I said, oh, Lord, help. I went in the shop to try and borrow a phone. But just then I had a kind voice say, can I help? And it was a lady from church. She drove me home and I was able to phone a locksmith to go and open the car. Well, a few days later, my daughter had gone out in the snow, in the dark, to get something from the car. And she didn't notice that on her way back to the house, the key ring had come apart and the car key had fallen off into the snow. And that night, another six inches of snow fell. And so in the morning, when we realised what had happened, there was no way of finding the key. So for a second time in just a few weeks, I had to call the locksmith this time to come and supply a whole new key. Well, sorry to bore you, bear with me just for a moment longer. My key problems continued. Around this same time, my son had come home through the back door. He yanked the handle down and the whole mechanism came off in his hand. And so for many days, all through that snowy period, I was continually hearing people hammering on the back door, having gone outside to get a log for the fire and the door clicked shut behind them and they found themselves locked out in the freezing snow, hoping that someone would hear them knocking and open the door from the inside. Funnily enough, through this whole time, I was currently reading a book by John Bevere entitled Enemy Access Denied. Well, I thought maybe the Lord's having a bit of a laugh with me, but I began to think a bit more about keys and doors. We use phrases, don't we, like doors of opportunity, keys to success, key to happiness, key to life. And from start to finish, life is full of literal, metaphorical and spiritual doors and keys. Jesus said, ask, you'll receive, seek and you'll find, knock and the door will be opened to you. Speaking of that wonderful way to heaven, that door to eternal life, which is opened through a relationship with Jesus, that all-important key. So that's spiritual doors. But Acts 12, we hear from Luke about a miraculous account of how the Lord supernaturally turned literal keys, literal doors, when the disciple Peter was in prison, waiting to probably be executed. Acts 12 says this, it says the night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains. Centuries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He, the angel, struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. And then the angel said to him, Put on your clothes and sandals. Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and the second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself and they went through it. And when they'd walked the length of one street, it says, suddenly, the angel left him. Well, that's a true story of doors being divinely opened. But if you want an excellent book to read, read The Heavenly Man by Brother Yun. It tells of a similar modern day account of how the Lord supernaturally opened real doors and gates of a high security prison in China to let the innocent Christian brother Yun escape and walk mysteriously unseen past armed guards and watchmen. 
Did you know that God has the power to turn kings for you? To open locked doors for you? To unlock chains and bring release for you? And ultimately, to open the gates of heaven for you? What are the key issues in your life today? After a year of lockdown, our jobs, our active ministries, our busy social lives have all been static for so long. It's a bit like my car stuck on the drive with a drained battery. Maybe today you're feeling disconnected. Loss of power, loss of drive. Has your faith grown dim? Have your prayers dwindled away? Or going back further, have you sat in a pew every Sunday for years and years and never experienced the active power and presence of the living God? If so, it's time for a jump start of the Holy Spirit power, a fuel injection, a wake up call, a reminder because you are part of an amazing spiritual story playing out in real time on the stage of this world since the dawn of time. You and I have a role in a living drama written by God himself, a true action story of God's supernatural victory over the satanic powers of darkness. Maybe you even have a speaking part in this amazing story. Or perhaps you're one of the all-important but quiet supporting extras that create the scene. What matters is that you have the power to play out your God-given role with confidence. Does your spirit need a jump start today? Are you weary? Some years ago Tim and I were looking after a young teenage boy and he begged us to take him to the cinema to see a James Bond movie, Skyfall. So we took him and sat down with popcorn in one hand, coke in the other. But for some reason, after about 20 minutes, he became very sleepy and kept nodding off. And before long, he fell fast asleep and snored through the whole film, waking up just as the story came to a dramatic end. If the Lord came for his church tomorrow, would he find you sleeping? I truly believe this is not the day for our spirit to be sleeping. Because a key part of God's magnificent story is beginning to come together and at a rapid pace. This is a time, it's a day to be fully charged, to be fully awake and to be ready to respond to whatever the Lord is calling you to do. Joel 2. The Lord says, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, weeping and mourning. Rend your heart, he says, not your garments. Return to the Lord your God. for He's gracious, compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. You know, I did feel helpless standing in the car park when the wind blew the door shut on my car locking all my personal stuff inside. I was so grateful and relieved when the locksmith arrived with the tools and the skills to reopen that door and let me back into the driving seat. You know, God can sometimes have a similar task in us when the stormy gales of life, if you like, can cause the door of our heart to slam shut, leaving all kinds of personal things locked inside. As a foster carer, I see firsthand how early trauma especially can cause a child to emotionally shut down, become self-defensive and fearfully controlling. Because when the adults in your life have somehow lost control, that child in panic feels the need to seize control. And because they don't have the ability that control is then accompanied by high anxiety. 
and my job as a foster carer is to firmly but gently take back those controls and reassure the child that I can be trusted to use those controls wisely. And then gradually the child can move over into the passenger seat, if you like, and begin to relax, begin to relax and be at peace, be a child again. You know, it's not only foster children that can suffer trauma and slam the door of the heart shut with the keys on the inside. That can happen to any of us. This past year has caused a great deal of trauma and suffering. Just a few days ago, my son went rushing out of the house late at night to try and deter a friend from taking his own life. The NHS is bracing itself for a surge in demand for mental health services. You know, there's good news. The good news is that like a locksmith, the Holy Spirit has unique power, if invited, to open us up again. To open up again that which has been locked in by accident, by trauma, by tragedy. The Holy Spirit can bring deep emotional healing when we entrust him with the keys to our heart. And then, rather than climbing back into the driving seat ourselves, the Lord gently encourages us to move over and entrust him to take the wheel of our life. And from there on, travel forwards together. I don't need to tell any of you how frustrating it is to be locked in. But it was only when the outer handle came off our back door that I noticed and discovered how horrible it is to be locked out, especially in the freezing cold. Truth can be painful, can't it? And it's a hard truth to hear that not everyone will gain access to the kingdom of heaven. Our instinct, of course, is to protest and say, what? No loving God would shut anybody out. And Pope Francis has made some controversial statements in recent years, one of which was to imply that atheists, do, that you don't have to be a Christian to enter heaven. You just have to be good. Any religion or teaching that fails to acknowledge the absolute centrality of Jesus Christ as the Son of God and the only way to the Father, that religion or teaching is a lie. When it comes to accessing heaven, the word of God could not be any clearer. But it's not what you know, but who you know that matters. Jesus is the key to heaven's door. John 3.36 says, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. 1 John 2.23 says, No one who denies the Son has the Father, but whoever acknowledges the Son has the Father also. You know, we can't accuse the Lord of cruelly shutting people out when he personally paid the full cost of your place in heaven. He purchased your entry ticket with his life. That heavenly invitation is for all, but a response is required. Jesus says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. If that amazing free gift is rejected, if it's rebuffed, cast aside, the Lord cannot be held to blame. In this age, we are swimming in a vast spiritual soup, a great cloudy broth of compromise and political correctness, walking on eggshells for fear of preaching a gospel that assaults someone's personal preferences, 
or prevents them from doing or living exactly as they wish. But you know, Jesus didn't come to build a fluffy nest to make us comfortable in this world. In fact, he's all about loosening our grip on the things of this life and turning our attention to the hereafter. He's like the eagle who plucks out all the fluff from the nest to make it so uncomfortable that the chick is forced to stand on the edge and contemplate what lies beyond. Where's life going? Where are you going? Now's the time to check that you have the right keys. Do you hold in your hand the keys to power and strength to live out a Christian life in this day? Do you hold the key to receiving healing and cleansing of the contents of your heart? Do you hold the key to life beyond the grave? Well, the good news is that one key fits all, and that key is Jesus. And his word says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. So we can do that right now. If you would like to, say these words after me. Merciful Lord Jesus, I acknowledge today that you are the Son of God, that you came to earth to pay my debts with your life. I believe that you rose again and will return as promised. I repent of all the sins and errors of my life and welcome your Holy Spirit to be living and active within me today and forevermore. Amen.
So thank you, as I say every week, because it's really important that we know that we're coming together as the Breakthrough family, the family of God, uh, to worship him. So thank you for being part of this worship. Thank you for being part of the Breakthrough family. Thank you for responding to God's call. And we pray that as God's family, as God's people, we will know his leading day by day. In the midst of uh, the restrictions that we're all, all experiencing at the moment. And we pray for that day when we can come back together physically as that breakthrough family and enjoy one another's company and enjoy one, a fellowship with one another in worship and around the tables uh, for the refreshments afterwards. Let's be praying for that day when that will be possible again. And let's share and pray for one another in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us now and forevermore. Amen. Let's continue to pray for one another as we go into this week, lifting one another to God, our Heavenly Father, God, our redeeming Son, God, uh, the Holy Spirit that comes and guides us day by day. Amen. Far away